For all things outdoors, listen to the father of two, the Jesus-loving TV show hosting Harry, True Blood American Redneck, Ben Cole. And listen to the outdoor filming, chef cooking, chocolate milk drinking, John Weismuller. And we are Rooted Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is a little bit delayed this week because me and John have been hammering down in Florida and Alabama, but on this episode in particular, we're going to talk about chasing turkeys in Florida. John, let's dive right in and get going with this Florida episode. Let's do it, man. I know it's been a little hectic. Schedule had to get pushed back just a bit, but I promise we got a lot of cool stories from those experiences down there in Florida. And man, Ben, I don't know about you, but uh, I was hot, man. It's a hot <laughs> time to be down there in South Florida. Yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a bigger guy. I'm, I'm built for the cold, not, not, not so much South Florida heat. Yeah, I am dense, densely packed. And I always like the cold weather better. And you know, uh, one thing that's crazy is when we were down there, you know, you went to a whole different place in a whole different time. And man, it was still, even though we were in more North Florida, it was still blistering hot by the afternoon. The mornings were kind of chilly at times, but good night, man. Those afternoons walking through trying to get on some birds, you know, they just went lockjaw and would not talk at all, at all. It was just dead silence, man. So I am uh, yeah. I'm actually glad to be back in Tennessee where it's um, kind of been cool all day long. Yes, same same here, man. I had a great time. I met up with some great people, hunted some hard public land, but, uh, it you know, there's, there's no place like home, right? So I'm, I'm just excited to be back. <laughs> yeah, no place like home at all. But you said something just then <clears throat> that... <laughs> rung a bell and is very fresh on my mind hard public land yeah that's right you heard oh, me yeah. folks public land can be very difficult to kill a bird especially if you've never been on that piece of public land um uh, we struggled with it we walked 20 miles and before i dive into that john you know i thought maybe you want to kind of tell your story because you know we have two different things that happened with us and like I said, you were more in the deep south of Florida where the Osceola is king, and we were in the north Florida side where the re or the eastern is still rocking and rolling up there. There's no no uh, Osceola's where we were. Yeah, so I went down to uh, big big Cypress down there. Um, <clears throat> so you know, I kind of did some research and. I got some pins from some friends and I get down there and whenever you're driving down there, you're just driving on like, you know, the state route or something. And, uh, I'm driving down and I pass this, this gate on, on my left and I'm going, and I'm like, all right, cool. I'll kind of keep that in the back of my head, you know, <clears throat> and we're driving down and then we get to this, uh, like information center for the, for the wildlife center or whatever it is and uh so i get down there and they're telling me that you know hey you can go through that gate you just have to park and then walk from from there there's going to be another gate you can't drive past that second gate I'm like ah right, cool you know so <clears throat> my brother and i we get down there and uh man we we get to this gate and it's got two signs and it says visitors welcome. And I'm like, all right, that checks out. I'm a visitor. Cool. And then it says on the next side, it says all hunters have to check in at like, uh, I forget the, but this like bear unit camp or check-in station or something. I'm like, okay, uh, I guess I'll go there. So anyway, we we ended up going going through this gate just to check it out. And you know, we didn't at at this point in time we weren't hunting. We were just driving around checking stuff out. And uh 
I go through there and I hear turkeys gobbling, hammering. And I'm like, okay, this may be a good place to go, you know. Uh, I'll just have to go check in at this other place and figure out how, how to get here, but whatever. Well, I get on the maps and uh, turns out, uh, you know, where, through through that gate that I was told I was allowed to go through and hunt, turns out that we're not. The walk mm. would have been like, oh, you know, less than a thousand yards. But from this place I had to check in at, it was like an eight mile walk. That was real great. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh, dude, you talk about hoofing it, man. My, me and my brother, we hoofed it, hoofed it. And, uh, dude, we got like six miles in this thing, five miles in. And, uh, it, it, long story short, dude, turns out these birds were on private and the landowner's a little skittish. And, uh, yeah, you know, I wasn't going to go on this dude's private, obviously. And I wasn't going to sit on the property line because, you know, that's illegal in in and of itself. But, you know, it's not like a the turkey can't walk. I was going to, you know, call the thing over or catch it, you know, however far away I needed to be, you know, co coming to the private. You know, I was going to do something. And uh, anyway, we got... We got there. We ended up running into the guy who owned that private. I had a super nice, respectful conversation. We ended up hunting some other place. And, uh, but dude, that one day we walked, you know, over 10 miles, something like that. And it just, golly bum, dude. Didn't even hear one or see one other than driving in that first gate. And then all them other days, dude, we hunted hard, man. Hunted, hunted, hunted. Uh, didn't really hear any gobbles on the public, ran into some hunters, you know, made, made a couple buddies, which was cool, but dude, down there, <clears throat> that, I mean, shoo, that WMA will test you. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's like 700,000 acres or something. Um, but you know, it's a lot of swamp and which also blew my mind, man. I had to change my whole outlook on turkey hunting there because here, here in Tennessee, you know, turkeys don't really like crossing, you know, rivers, creeks, you know, fences. They will, but they don't really like to do it, you know. And uh, over there, man, it's all swamp. And I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, a turkey's not walking through this, you know, two foot of water. Oh, yeah, they are. I saw turkey tracks in the bottom of swamps, and I'm like, okay, well, I guess the turkey walks through. I mean, it just blew my mind being, you know, from the hills of Tennessee going down there. But, man, we hunted, hunted, hunted. And then uh, on our last day, we hunted the north zone of Florida. We hunted just north of Tampa. And uh, hunted with uh, somebody that we met through the NWTF show. And uh, we we had one bird gobbling pretty far away, and that was the most action we had that day. Sa same story. Walking, walking, trying, sitting here, checking out this spot, going here. Uh, dude, just walked, 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 and gave it a valiant effort, man. You know, but uh, that that's public land turkey hunting, dude. It's just... You, you you just walk, you try to e-scout as best as you can before you get there, and, and then you just roll with the punches. And uh, no, Nonetheless, though, had a great time, Lear learned a lot of Florida laws and other things like that, Th things that I definitely didn't know that could have helped me had I known. So, uh, you know, such such is life, and you live and learn, and... I'm excited to go back one day. Yeah, man. It sounds like you guys had uh, <clears throat> a pretty rigorous hunt there with all the walking and all that. And, you know, uh, fortunately yeah, for me, I I had some private land that I started on. And uh, I shot a bird first, <laughs> the very first morning of the hunt. Mm -hmm. It was not after flight. It was not fly down either. 
Uh, those birds, man, we thought, man, they're dialed. We're about to hammer right off the roost. They were gobbling at everything. And then they flew down. The hens got fired up. I got into a calling war with the hens, and I thought, it's about to happen. Like, this is this is it. Those hens are going to come to us. They're going to walk around this corner full strut, blown up, just ready to fight. No. Incorrect. They just went completely silent and walked off. But the cool thing was is there was this road that went down to the swamp, down to the river. And, man, it was loaded with strut marks, with turkey tracks, everything. I mean, there's just this one road was just loaded where they were going back and forth from the ag field back to the roost. And they just made a big circle, just a huge circle around this property, but they always ended up coming back down this road to go down into the swamp where they were roosting. And, <clears throat> you know, most of the time from what I've gathered is, uh, talking to Wes, the property owner there, they usually roost across the river, but these birds, almost all the days we were there, except for two roosted on our side of the river. So, I don't know what was different about that, but nonetheless, we didn't kill them right off the bat. We went in, grabbed some breakfast, regrouped a little bit, and then thought, you know, these birds are cruising that road. We know that. We know that they are going back and forth down this sand-covered road. Because, I mean, man, there was tracks on top of tracks on top of tracks. And then the strut lines all the way down. You could tell that they were just highly using that road, just a high traffic area. So we went in and sat down where two roads came together and thought, well, you know, if we don't, if they end up coming this way, we can catch them there. If they end up coming this way, we can catch them there, you know, kind of cut them off at the intersection of that road. Oh man, I was almost asleep. I was this close to being snoozeville. Ryan Ryan was in Snoozeville, and Kate nice. was right there about to be at Snoozeville as well. And I hear, oh, I was like, oh, 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 man, oh, there he is. And I'm up now. I'm awake, man. I was up. My eyes were wide, you know. <clears throat> his heart was pumping. I was, I was sitting there shaking, man. My knees were just going crazy. We did just a little soft yelp. Yelp, 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 yelp. And lo and behold, though, there was a hen again. Go figure. A hen is with them again. Well, she comes in first, and these long beards are like two foot from us. So the way this road worked, we had some really dense cover to our right. I mean, so thick, they couldn't see us. And we could hardly see them, but we could feel them every time they would drum, man, that I could feel it in the ground. And there was three, turned out to be three long beards. Just, I was like, Oh, but of course the hen was in front of them. Of course she was. And naturally, you know, when a turkey is that close to you, two, three foot away, you know, they're going to pick you out. They're going to see something that they don't like. And with my knees shaking mm -hmm. the way they were, I know that's what <laughs> she saw. I know she saw my legs twitching, man. But the craziest so. thing of it all was those long beards only had to take three more steps. And I could have smashed one at two yards. I mean, and it would have been beautiful mm. because they were full strut, blown up, doing everything right, gobbling at every little thing. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, man, this is about to be the best footage ever. Birds that close, so close, you can see the hair shaking on their head when they gobble. It's just like, man. Mm. Well, as hens do, she decided she didn't like something. So she turned and walked away. <laughs> and guess who followed her? Those old long beards. They followed her right out of there. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you kidding me? And me and Ryan and Cade looked at each other. We're like, we got to go now. Like, we got to go right now. 
We waited till they got around yeah, the, now we're never, the boys. yeah bend of the road that takes you down to the swamp, and I mean, we all three just jumped up real quick, and I had my gun was loaded, ready to go. Cade was behind me, and him and Ryan were behind me, and man, I was creeping up that road, and we were calling as we were walking up this road, and the dude mm-hmm. never said another word. Turkeys never gobbled again. We get to that intersection, so there was the road that turns down to the swamp. And then there was a bulldozer trail that looks like maybe a burn line or something like that. And Mm -hmm. out steps, old boy, full strut blown up coming around the corner. And I was in the video. You can hear me say, are you on him? Are you on him? And Kay was like, no, not yet. Not yet. Kill before he got kill him out of his mouth. Boom. I done smashed that (laughs) thing, man. That old 20 gauge with that apex. Dude, that, that retay patterned so well with that apex ammunition and the jebs choke hmm. literally at 25 yards i was in a, a circle like that like 80 to 90 percent of the pellets were all right there and dude <laughs> i was so excited you know how i get you know that i just oh, yeah. absolutely Sideways. lose my mind man every <clears throat> time i kill anything it don't matter what it is it can be a squirrel a turkey uh a dang raccoon, a deer, ducks even, man. I just get beside myself on on these ducks, man, and I just can't handle it. I can't help myself. And, dude, I did that again. <laughs> I started hooping and hollering and was like, we got it done in Florida, baby. You know how mm-hmm. I do prancing around like I'm Why the king yeah? of the world, you know. <clears throat> and, man, got down there that bird had some hooks on him one of them was actually filed off kind of it was still a good hook but it was it was filed kind of rounded the other one was pointed i don't know what that is Hmm. what that's about but it turns out i shot like a quarter of his beard off (laughs) 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 i was like hey man i don't care i don't care (laughs) yeah whatever we got turkey nuggets coming deep fried right around the corner here we about to put them on on the griddle, and uh, oh, man, dude. dude. So after that, we were all pumped, you know. Did our interviews, the videos, and dude, I was so overcome by the Lord when I got to this bird. I just prayed immediately over the harvest, man. I, and it was words that I never even thought of. They mm-hmm. just came out of yeah. my mouth, man. And then this Bible verse came to my mind and dude, this is all the Lord talking through me. I didn't say any of these words. None. I mean, I said them, but they were from him because I had no notion that I was going to go in and talk the way I talked beforehand. I had, I had not planned it out. I hadn't done any of it. And the, the verse that I went with was Psalms 46, 10, where it says, be still and know that I'm God. And the, the correlation there is sometimes you just got to be still. Sometimes you got to go back in those woods, be still, and let God do his thing, man. Because if we wouldn't have done that, if we would have kept trying to push him, kept trying to chase him, we would still be the big goose egg on the long beards. It just, that's where we would be right now. And, dude, and there was more stuff that I said that I, I can't even remember. I can't even remember everything that I said. Because it was all God projecting through my mouth. It wasn't me saying, oh, man, look, I killed a turkey, man. Uh, you know, praise the Lord and leave it at that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, man, I've never had that kind of experience where God just like threw words out of my mouth that I didn't even know were going to happen. Crazy True. experience, man. Uh, then we dove into the public land. Ooh, 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 and then oh, there, there, there goes a we bunch went, of walking. <laughs> it went south fast. Yep. Yeah, man. So at the end of it, we had ended up walking 20 miles by the time that was over with the public land. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think we hit public land for, yeah, we hit that for one day and we found a bunch of sign, found a bunch of tracks and everything, saw him. The same hen twice and no gobbles, no nothing. Just about got my truck mm-hmm. stuck, bro. I had to power launch my truck through these old forest service roads, four wheel drive, traction Gosh. control off. 
spool that turbo up on that old diesel truck and just let her eat, baby. And we got through it. We did. I think I may have tore something see. up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, see, uh, that that's one of the mistakes that I made is, uh, <clears throat> so listen, I got off of work at like uh, 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drove straight to Valdosta, Georgia, where my brother lives. Got there at like uh, like 4 a.m. his time. <clears throat> Picked him up, and then we just kept driving. We basically drove like, if you look at a map, Miami is, you know, kind of like bottom right. We were like the same like distance down, just in the middle of Florida is where this place is. So we drove, you know, another, whatever that is, like, I don't know, six hours, seven hours or something. <clears throat> so we just kept driving. And uh, you may be like, why are you telling me this? Well, we did all this in a Honda Accord, a 98 yes. Honda Accord. Yes, get that and, Accord uh, rolling. <clears throat> look, and I, and I was a little worried because I was like, <clears throat> you know, I don't know how these roads are going to be. You know? I, and I, I'll say this, dude. Those roads on that refuge or uh, wildlife management, whatever it's called in Florida, mm -hmm. are dude. It's nicer than my freaking driveway, man. These roads are awesome. I was like, oh, dude, I'm going everywhere. Well, when I was telling you earlier about how <clears throat> it made me go to this check-in station, mm -hmm. which by the way was like 25 miles away, you can only get through it on these gravel roads. Blah blah blah. Well, the first day we're driving through there, and we see a couple Jakes and. uh that was really about it. As far as that spot went, we I tried it a couple t a time or two, and it no gobbles, no other birds. Anyway, but you get to the check-in station, and there's a gate, and then there's this road, and it says that you need a v. I think it's called an off-road vehicle permit. And I'm like, <clears throat> all right, dude, I'll you know I, I'll I'll pay your fee so I can drive down this road, whatever. So the first the uh, first evening I was there, the check-in station was closed. So we just walked down the road a little bit and, uh, you know, tried it out, whatever. Tried to roost the bird. It didn't happen. But I'm like, dude, this road's nice. My, my little Honda will make it down this. So the next morning I go to get a permit. I'll walk up to the check-in station, you know, in my old 98 Honda Accord. I roll up in there like I owned the joint. And, uh... <clears throat> I'm like, hey, me, hey, man, you know, I'm from Tennessee, blah, blah, hunting turkeys, this, that, the other. I'm like, how do, how do I go about getting one of these permits? And he's like, oh, man, they're just $100. I said, perfect. Sounds good. Sign me up. If you're telling me that I don't have to walk eight miles to this private, you know, birds that I'm wanting to hunt, you know, like, sounds great. I'm Like I said earlier, I'm a bit on the bigger side. I don't like the hot. Hot and walking eight miles do not mix. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. Nope. So we we go to get it, and he goes, "Did you, is that your Honda right there? Like, yes, sir. I figured I'd just drive it on that nice gravel road right there. I'm not going to, like, go off into anything. He's like, nope, it's got to be a four-wheel drive. I'm like, oh, come on, man. You ain't going to let me take this old Honda down there? And I got the, the big old thumbs down on the Honda going down this oh. nice gravel road. I couldn't believe it. So if I go again, I will bring my Chevy. But I was like, dude, what a story, man. If I could take a Honda down this road, that'd be cool as heck. Or you could have just but, went to Walmart and slapped a four-wheel drive sticker on the back <laughs> corner panel. <laughs> man, this baby is four-wheel drive. What you talking about? Yeah, but, y'all, I, I got me a drive. welder welding me on another shaft. Yeah, man, yeah. We, we welded that shaft right up. Works good. <laughs> we, we sling it. This thing is light, uh, man. It, just, uh, it hovers across the mud. That's what this thing does. It's just like a hovercraft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm like, dude, it's so lightweight. If I get stuck, I'll just pick it up. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But, but, um, yeah, anyway, it didn't work out. <laughs> Man, you know, I got home and I looked, and something caught my eye under my truck, and I was like, oh, man, that ain't good. So where my rear drive shaft goes <laughs> to my rear axle, it's it's wet. I was like, sick. Man. This uh, is just yes. what I need. 
right now is a a leaking seal from power launching through a mud hole. You know, fantastic. <laughs> this is awesome. Exactly what I needed right now, but uh, we'll take it to the shop in a little while. They all closed, so <laughs> we got to ease on there when we get there. But, you know, uh, man, it was just crazy, though, yeah, seeing, right. seeing the difference between the management area roads and the forest service roads. Totally different ball game. The management area roads were mm -hmm. super nice, well-maintained. The forest service roads, dude, front-end alignment, knock your teeth out, jar you to pieces. <laughs> I mean, I literally think I chipped a tooth on one of them because my truck hit a hole so hard. I was like, good night of living, boys. Bring that dozer down here and slick this thing yeah. off a little bit, you know? Come on. Uh, dude, we even oh, crossed dude, the, the you, river man. in my truck. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it was pretty crazy. Oh, God. I mean, it was, a, it was a hard bottom. I made Ryan walk out there <laughs> to make sure that <laughs> it was, you know, good and gravel bottom. And he's like, man, I don't know. I said, boy, we're going to send her. And we did. We sent it right across <laughs> it. And it was all the way up, like halfway up the grill on my truck. And, you know, I got it. Mine's got a thing lift Excellent. on it. 37s. And, yeah, yeah. Dude, it sits up there. And that's some pretty deep water. Probably not the wisest thing I've ever done, but. I tell you what, though, looking no. back on it, dude, I'd do it again in two seconds, man. It was it was a ball. We had a blast, a blast. Thank you. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, and you know, you said something earlier that I think people miss a lot. Whenever you don't get something in the morning, whether it's ducks, deer, turkey, hog, crow hunting, I don't care, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Fishing, whatever you're doing. That morning breakfast and you're <clears throat> gathering your thoughts and everybody's strategizing on what to do and where to go and how to call it, how to whatever, where to come from, you know, how's the wind if you're deer hunting, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I, I'm i telling you, I have seen a lot of plans come together that mid-morning or early afternoon hunt that was based on that breakfast. I mean, that... That is a dangerous time because all you've got is some upset hunters that are just plumb mad at the critter that they're going after. And they're like, all right, guys, how do we do it? And it uh tends to work out a lot. <clears throat> it does, man. And that was the crazy thing is, you know, we had contemplated on sitting on a part of that ag field and just waiting on something to come out. But, you know, we kept saying, man, I think we should just go hit that road because that's where all the dang sign is. And, you know, there was other sign on other roads, but not like this road, man. Mm -hmm. It was their corridor, their main way of walking because the way that road laid. So it was that main road, the ag field, some really thick scrub oaks, and then a sheer drop off to the creek or the river. So they were just walking that road all the way down to the river, you know, cause it goes all the way down to the bottom and it just made it super easy for them. And that was their one way path to get to where they wanted to go. And man, patience played a big part in that too. And, you know, I'm not really a deer mm -hmm. hunter of turkeys. It's not fun for me. I like to chase them. I like to get, get on them, you know, hear that gobble and, and go to them. But Man, that the the thing is, is if a bird ain't gobbling, you can't find them unless you just stumble nope. upon them somehow, you know. But I mean, they were just being super quiet and not making hardly any sound. So all we could do was deer hunt, them. and that's that's what we ended up having to do. And we weren't even there for that long before they started coming up. So it was well worth going and sitting there, but. You know, we just did our homework and did our research first thing while we were out there, you know, and, and just were very observant of our surroundings and, and what was going on and which way those birds were going, talking to Wes, my buddy that owns the place. And he said, man, look, these birds every day, they're going to go this way and then they're going to come back this way in the afternoon every day. That's what they do. And he was spot on. Spot on. They did hey, exactly that. Know. Yep. There, there is a saying in the hunting world, <clears throat> like at outfitters and stuff, you know, don't, don't guide the guide. Yeah. Sa yeah. Same concept with, 
with the landowner, if you're if you're fortunate enough to have a spot like that, it's like, hey, that person lives there. They watch these birds or all the time. Like, mm-hmm. don't guide the guy, man. Just 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 listen. But I will say this: there's a huge <clears throat> correlation between birds gobbling on public and birds gobbling on private. The birds on public do not gobble near as much because they're so pressured, and they know. I think they're adapting to the fact that, hey, if I gobble, I'm probably (laughs) going to get shot. It's a good chance. Oh, yeah. Real good chance of me dying. You know, and and I think, too, that that Mm -hmm. plays into the predation and all that that me and you have talked about before on other episodes. But I really think that Mm -hmm. even though these birds have a pea-sized brain, they are still smart enough to know you know what? The more I gobble, the more I give my location away, the more likely it is that there's a predator out there ready to attack at any second. And I think that's the biggest, Mm -hmm. biggest thing is on private land, they're not pressured as much because they don't have to be, you know, there's not 30,000 people coming through that private land, hammering them with calls and all that. There's three people. That's all. Just three dudes. Yeah. And that's it, man. You know, nothing else. Nothing more, nothing less. Just three dudes in there, out. You know, we were gone. And my buddy's still down there hunting. You know, he owns the place. And he said, man, they're still hammering down here, which makes perfect sense. Because, you know, it all boils down to the pressure. In my opinion, that's what it boils down to, is the pressure. Yeah. And, you know, too, on on the public there, it's really hard to go and, and do a whole bunch of trapping like we've talked about because, you know, I mean, it's it's public. You know, you're probably going to end up with, you know, your traps walking away or whatever the case may be. And on private, like me and you have been doing, man, you can really. <sighs> well, yeah. Big Excuse yawn, me. son. God, yeah, dude. Late night, baby. Yeah, man. Um. But, you know, on our private farms here in Tennessee, me and you both are are trapping religiously to to try to reduce the nest predators, man, and the other predators that are roaming through the land. And, and we're not ever going to get them all, but, you know, that and no. pressure is what I think, and I'm not a biologist by any means. I am not a turkey expert. I'm not a turkey purist. You know, I don't care. I like to eat turkey. If it has a nice fan and a good beard, hammer down. You know, that's my philosophy. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, if I got to yeah. run run down a road and, and wait for him to come across real quick to kill him, you better believe I'm going to do it. As long as it's legal, I'm going to do it to kill a turkey. Yep. And, man, that's, that's, that's just what I've gathered from hunting all this public land in Florida and then going back and hunting the private land in Florida, same thing, but man, the birds gobbled way different, way different. They were hammering hard on the private and we didn't hear a single gobble on the public, not a single gobble. And we walked for Uh, miles, miles and miles and miles and never, never heard one. uh, That. That is a bummer, dude. Yeah, I, the only gobbles I heard on the public, technically, uh, they were on a little piece of private, which, by the way, that may sound confusing to some people because, like, here here in Tennessee, if you have a WMA, there's not just, like, a random piece of private in the center of it. Mm-mm. I don't know why. <clears throat> I don't know how, but in Florida, on this big huge wma there's little sections of private all in it it it's and maybe that's why the roads are so good because there's actual private houses and residencies i I, maybe but anyway so those birds were just happened to be in this dude's front yard gobbling but of course anyway uh that's all i and then i heard that one bird when i was hunting north of tampa there and uh Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that that was it. And uh, I do have to give a quick shout out to uh, Mr. Caden Gray, the gentleman that 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 we met at the turkey show. Yeah, uh, for being uh, 
being a very nice guest. His family owns a restaurant. They have delicious uh, I had pork chops and apple pie. It was great, and I had a good time. So thanks to thanks to Mr. Gray there. But anyway, man, it was just it, it, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I, I will be back because the bottom line is I did not get my Osceola, and uh, I am bound and determined to get that one day in life because, you know, man, a lot of these outfitters, which there's nothing wrong with it, I totally, totally, totally – understand why outfitters charge what they charge you know it is what it is uh you know supply and demand is real Mm -hmm. but uh you know i just uh if i can avoid paying you know three grand or more for a turkey i'm gonna try to yeah so yeah so i will be back for sure yeah man and i'm gonna be with you this time because Osceola's on my list yep. too. You know, me and you've killed Easterns together. We've killed Rios together. Now we got to go kill the Osceola together and the Merriam together and finish out our slam and get those four <laughs> birds knocked out in the books, get some taxidermy done, and then cook up some grub. <laughs> you know, I'm all about that grub, man. I love it. It's fantastic. Can't help myself oh, with that dude. grub, man. Dude, speaking of grub, this is not hunting related at all. <laughs> but listen, I I I have this blackstone and it was at my parents' house for a while, and I finally got it back to my house. And dude, I have been cooking on that thing nice. nonstop. And I say all that to say I'm gonna I'm gonna make some uh basically like I was thinking black and turkey uh, tacos. Mm. Yeah, man. I think it's going to be good. Hmm. I've been thinking about it in my brain. Now, of course, I'm going to go with the OG turkey nugget. You got to have those, right? Because, yeah. listen. Of course. <clears throat> why Why am, am I talking about this? So, if y'all remember, my father-in-law, poor little Richie. Poor little Richie. He, uh, we, we still have our birds, uh, in the freezer from, from last season. Mm -hmm. And he, he wants to wait until his son comes down. Uh, we had planned on doing this before it it didn't really work out, whatever, but his son's coming down sometime here next like month or two or something. Anyway, so I'm starting to think of ways to, ways to cook this turkey. I'm going to cook it a bunch of different ways. So. Uh, obviously turkey nugget i think some blackened tacos and i think i'm going to make some in a crock pot like in in broth and uh, a couple other things and shred it up that sounds yeah, delicious man. well yeah, you know now, you're talking about cooking turkey and i'm getting hungry john God, well, just listen, eat, bro. we are going to make a video I, I'm i'm just letting these people know yeah, there there will be a point in time where Rooted Television will have a episode about uh, cooking turkeys. Yes, so it's coming. Oh, it is. But one thing, real quick, before we go, Johnny boy, I want to tell the world: look, yeah. if if you're watching this or listening, we have our very own turkey calls, Rooted Television turkey calls, powered by Silver Side Outdoors. Listen to this right here. I'm gonna give you a little sound file. Turn it up. Ooh. Sounds good. Yeah, man, I, th- I think we can work with that. But look, we got them. If you're in Demopolis, Alabama, they just so happen to be for sale there in Southern Oak Outdoors store. So you can buy hats. You can buy shirts. You can buy rooted turkey calls. Hey, or you can just hit us up and we can get some made and sent your way. Whatever you want, we got you. But, uh, John, you got anything else before we roll out of here? No, man, no, not really. Uh, I just want to tell the people sorry for the delay on the episode, but <clears throat> we were out traveling around, and uh, we just had to make it work this way. So I, I appreciate y'all's patience. Thanks for tuning in. Please don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and thank you for listening wherever you may be listening. And as always, don't forget.
to go to our website, rootedtelevision.com, for all past episodes. You can also go to Spotify for that or Apple Podcasts. But we have a store at the website. You can get all things Rooted Podcast and Rooted Television at our store. Thanks, guys. The Redneck is out. See ya. For all things Rooted Podcast and Rooted Television, and I mean hats, shirts, hoodies, and other merch, check out our friends at CH Lone Star Pro and the link that is in our description.